appreciate you taking the time to speak with our media today. We're going to head into questions, and the first one will be from Scott Petrick. Hey, Juan, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Congrats. Welcome to Cleveland. Um, hey, how much time have you spent talking to um, Jim Schwartz, if at all? Um, we was up there talking, I would say, maybe like 30, 45 minutes or something like that, but um, he got me pumped up. That's all I can say. Like already just like talking a little bit about football, the scheme, how he see me in the defense, and um, he got me ready to go for sure. Well, how does he see you in if it's center field um, or deep safety? Just how comfortable are, are you in that role? I mean, I'm very comfortable. I mean, I think I'm that guy that can cover from sideline to sideline. Um, no matter where the ball is going to go, I can see myself going to get it. Um, but I can tell that he likes those guys that can do multiple jobs, being able to cover man to man, being down in the box, playing in a deep half, a deep half and in a third. So um, he definitely see me as that guy that can do all the different roles. Thank you, Scott. Chris Easterling is next. Hey, Juan. Welcome to Cleveland. Um, what did I ask you? You know, you've been part of two Super Bowl championship teams. What kind of gravitas does that sort of give you as you walk into the, walk into that locker room to kind of, you know, kind of set a tone, be a leader, you know, um, from from day one? I mean, when you're a part of a, a team that – I mean, if you're a part of a team that's being able to go to multiple Super Bowls and win multiple Super Bowls, you're willing to take that wherever you go. Um, I have the experience winning uh, two of them and being in three, so I know what it feels like to be in that big game, and I know what it takes to win, so that's what I'm going to bring with me. I'm going to bring that energy, and I'm going to bring it to my teammates as well. And if I see someone, like, slacking, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them know, like, that's not the way to go about it. Like, let's, let's pick it up so we can get to where we want to be. How much did, uh, you know, you, while you're with Kansas City, how much did you kind of grow into a role like that, you know, with them? Um, I started off kind of quiet. I mean, I was a rookie, not really knowing too much, like just listening to the older guys. But as time went on, I became one of the older guys in the room and I had a bunch of rookies that I had to um, depend on this season. Like we had we had five rookies, four to five rookies this year that had to play. And and I, I was looked at as that guy that had to be the leader. So I had to be that teacher in the room and be the guy that they can lean on if something was to go wrong and to lift them up. Thank you, Chris. Mary Kay Cabot, let's go to you. Hey, Juan, uh, just, just wondering, you know, in looking at your Twitter uh, and just kind of getting the vibe of, mm -hmm. of you being here for this little short amount of time, you know, you're kind of embracing the whole dog pound, the land and all that kind of stuff. So what has your reception been so far from Browns fans and how do you know, you know, about the vibe of the land and the dog pound and all that stuff? Um. The Browns fans have been amazing. Like, they've been messaging me. They've been showing all of their support since the day that, I mean, the announcement came out. But I'm super excited about it because I've heard many good things about the dog pound. The fans out here are crazy, and that's what I love to be a part of. When I come out that tunnel, I want the fans to jack me up and make me ready to run through a wall. And that's, how, that's what I hear about Cleveland, and I'm excited. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. Daryl Ryder, go ahead. Hey, Juan, welcome to Cleveland. Uh, I want to ask you, uh, it, it looked like the Chiefs and Browns were starting to develop a little bit of a rivalry there, played in the playoffs, then had that season opener. It was real you know, competitive. Just from your perspective, because a lot of those guys are still on this team, just what was your uh, impression of the Browns and, and how close they were? And do you feel like you're a player that could kind of come in here and help this group get over the top and get to where you were in Kansas City? So with Cleveland, I remember playing them and I just remember them being a team that was like willing to run down your throat and punch you in the mouth like early. So I, that just shows that they have the the ability to get to the to the big game. And I feel like I'm that type of player that can add to the defense and help them get to where they want to go. And I mean, I'm excited to play and play next to like next to Miles Garrett and uh, Grant Delpin and those guys, because I've been watching a little bit of their film and I just feel like they're really good players that can and help us win. And you're not a guy that was a role player in KC. You were a starter, and you're going to mm -hmm. obviously come in here and be a starter. Just how would you describe yourself as a player? What type of safety are you? Are you a ball hawk? Are you phys Are you a, you know, a guy that just gets up in guys' faces? Just how would you describe yourself as a player? 
So I've always been taught to be that guy to never allow your coach to take you off the field. So I would see my guy, see me as being that guy that can do everything. He can cover, be down in the box, make plays. He can blitz, sack the quarterback. I want to be that guy that can take control of a game and go get the ball when it's in the air and cause fumbles when it's that time to make that big play. Appreciate it, Daryl. Dan Lobby's next. Hey, Juan, welcome to Cleveland. Um, having been to the Super Bowl all those times, kind of to piggyback off Chris's question earlier, what do you think is the most difficult part of, of getting to that game or something people don't know about how hard it is to to get there? I mean, it's it's very hard, honestly. You have to stay disciplined, like, for the whole season. Some you, As you see in the NFL, some teams start fast and finish slow. Some teams start slow and finish fast. So it's, it's all about just staying disciplined. And getting to multiple Super Bowls is even harder. Once you win one, you got a target on your back each and every week because everybody's trying to knock down the top dog. So it's it's definitely hard to get there. And, th- and then obviously you were part of that, that Kansas City team that broke a pretty long drought for the Chiefs. You were part of that. Pride. I know you didn't play in that game, but mm-hmm. – What was that like? And can you imagine kind of that here in Cleveland? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like I said before, like all of the pieces are here. Got a really good quarterback receivers. The defense is super strong. I feel like all of the pieces are here. We have that capability of getting there and and making a splash in the playoffs and making it to the Super Bowl. And I have all confidence in that. Thanks, Dan. We'll go to Cam Justice. Hey, Juan. Welcome to Cleveland. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. You just you just got here. But, you know, have you gotten any reaction about your arrival from some of your new teammates? What does that look like for you so far? Um, I've talked to some of my teammates. There's a couple of guys that have reached out. They seem pretty pumped that I'm here. And that's pretty much it. Um, but I'm excited to get for OTAs and, and get to know the guys a lot more and to start working together so we can work towards our dream and getting back to that Super Bowl. And you said you had talked to Jim Schwartz. He kind of pumped you up. But when, mm-hmm. you, uh, when you were looking at the Browns, even before uh, you signed, do you see a part of your game that you think is going to be able to really shine here on this defense with the guys that are on this roster? I do. I definitely do. Like like I said, with Coach uh, Schwartz, he just – he drew up a couple of plays on the, on the uh, board, and I just like what he was drawing up. But I can see me stepping in and playing a big role and helping this team uh, tremendously and, and making a lot of plays for this team as well. Thank you, Kim. Ashley Bastock has our next question. Hey, Juan, welcome. Um, just kind of wanted to ask, I asked Dalvin a similar question yesterday, but as you kind of come to a new team, and especially for you, you know, with JJ3 not here anymore, he was kind of a big leader in this secondary. So what's your leadership style, and especially when you're coming to a new team and you're kind of the new guy in that secondary now? You know, you always got to walk in and try to, like, figure out what it's going to be like. So I'm not going to be that guy that's going to step in and just try to take over everything. I'm going to figure out how, figure out how things are going to go, but I'm not that type of guy that's going to just going to be on the field yelling at everyone, telling them, let's go push yourself. And I'm not that type of guy. I'm the one that's going to lead by example, but if you're not working hard, I will step up and say something, but I'm not going to be the guy that's going to like put you on blast in front of the whole team. I'll come up to you personally and let you know. And then just, I know, just getting to Cleveland and getting in the building for, I assume, your first day, just what has your first overall, like, impression been kind of a broad question? I mean, it's amazing. Like, I came here not knowing what to expect, and I try to do that everywhere I go, and definitely it has impressed me. Like, the facilities are truly amazing here. Um, I got here last night, actually, and the first thing I looked at was downtown, and it, it shocked me. Like, it was really beautiful. And I wasn't expecting it. So I'm excited to get here and actually be able to work my way around and and see what everything's like. Thank you, Ashley. Back to Scott Petrick. Hey, Juan, obviously you're confident in your new team and motivated to get back to the Super Bowl. But how hard is it leaving a team that you had so much success with and just won a Super Bowl? I mean, it's it's really hard. It's hard because you you build those relationships with the guys in the locker room. And when you build those relationships, you don't want to leave. But it's sometimes it's part of it's part of business. Some teams can't bring you back. And at the same time, you can see yourself fitting in in a different organization and helping them become way better or making it to the Super Bowl and, and adding your your skill set to that defense and to make us so much better. And I'm excited for that. Thanks. Thank you, Scott. Mary Kay Cabot is up again. 
Uh, yeah, one, just wondering, uh, so on the defensive side of the ball, the Browns have added a lot of new players this week in Dalvin and Oboe and you and a couple of other guys. Uh, I'm wondering, do you feel like a defense can change uh, from a culture standpoint overnight? And if so, what's it going to take? It, it definitely can. Um, it can it can change in a better way and, and also can go downhill as well. If you add bad pieces to a defense and bad people to a defense, you can bring in cancer into the locker room. And that's not something that you want. But if you bring in good people into an organization and bring them into the defense, you can have those guys that can motivate each other to push each other to get better each and every week. And do you feel like that's that's what you're feeling here? Is that the vibe that you're getting, that there's like an infusion of of some new energy and, and some really good guys? I definitely do. I think the guys that were here as well, they can feel it. Like they reached out and, and was welcoming to be here. And that, that just shows that the guys are excited for this season and they care about who actually comes into this locker room. Thanks, Mary Kay. Dale Ryder, you're up. Hey, Juan, I wanted to ask you about the other AFC North quarterbacks. Obviously, you've had a couple of battles with Joe Burrow. Mm -hmm. uh, now you get uh, Lamar Jackson twice a year. And then, of course, the Steelers have Kenny Pickett. So just uh, if you could, your, your thoughts on coming into a, a very highly competitive division with some really, really good quarterbacks. It's I mean, it's going to be hard each and every week. I've had the chance to play against, I think, Lamar a couple of times. So I kind of know what his game is like. Played against Joe Burrow a couple of times. So I know what he likes to do as well. The only one that I haven't had a chance to play against is uh, Kenny Pickett. But the thing is, like, I've heard a lot of good things about him as well. It's going to take hard work and dedication each and every week because these guys, they have the capability to wreck games. They have great arms. And with Lamar Jackson, if you look at him, the guy can throw the ball and run as well, so he can beat you by himself. Um, it's going to be hard each and every week, and you got to prepare as if, like, each week is a Super Bowl. And I know you were asked about leadership earlier and coming in and trying to be one of those uh, you know, vocal leaders on the field and in the locker room. One of the issues the Browns had last year was communi communication on the field in games. Just how what can you do maybe to be that guy to settle that down and just make sure everybody's where they're supposed to be doing what they're supposed to do without it, you know, uh, becoming like you're out there trying to take things over, if you know what I'm saying. And in the NFL, like this game is all about who makes the least amount of mistakes. And if you're on the field making mistakes, that's going to cause you to lose football games. And one thing that I'm going to, I know that I'm going to do, I'm going to try to bring everybody together to make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, and that's simply by just like hanging out in the locker room or going out to dinner together, like doing things like that, that just built that bond and you will know what your teammates are capable of, you know, their strength and weaknesses. So when you come together like that, it just allows you to play so much better. Thanks, Daryl. We'll take one more question. It'll be from Cam Justice. You kind of answered my question a little bit there at the end. Um, I, I was wondering for you, what does it look like to get integrated with that teammates? Ideally, this early, you just got here, you're getting a lay of the land, getting a lay for Cleveland, but what does it look like early on and of getting that chemistry going so you're ready to go? So with me, I'm just going to, like I said, I'm just going to take it slow. I'm not going to get in and just like put my foot down and try to like make make it my way. <clears throat> but what I'm going to do is just like just try to get to know my teammates a little bit more, like know things that they like to do, like outside of football. And so we can get together um, outside of football and just like come together and build that brotherhood. That's going to allow us to play better, like I said before. And that's going to make us more elite than any X and O's. You can study football all day. But if you don't know what your what your teammates' strengths and weaknesses are, you're not going to be good. So that's that's my main goal is just to uh, get to know my teammates. Thank you, Cam. Juan, appreciate the time today. Welcome to Cleveland. Welcome to the Browns. Look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate you all. Take care. All right, everybody, that is a wrap for today.